It is about, well, plot-wise, it's about an 18-year-old girl. It's the summer after high school, right before college, and she is in Europe on this sort of very structured European trip, and she kind of makes a couple of uncharacteristically <laughs> rash decisions to not go see Hamlet and then to go off to Paris for a day with this Dutch guy she meets. And those chain of events change the trajectory of her life. So it's about love, it's about fate, it's about accidents, but it's also kind of about the transformative power of travel. Melanie and I stand together in silence. Whoa, she says. Yeah, whoa, I say back. That was pretty cool. And I hate Shakespeare. I nod. And was it me or was that hot guy from the line earlier, the one who played Sebastian? Was he totally checking us out? Us? But he threw me the coin. Or had I just been the one to catch it? Why wouldn't it have been Melanie with her blonde hair and her camisole top that he'd been checking out? Mel, 2.0 as she calls herself, so much more appealing than Allison 1.0. I couldn't tell, I say. And he threw the coin at us. Nice catch, by the way. Maybe we should go find them. Go hang out with them or something. They're gone. Yeah, but those guys are still here. She gestures to the money collectors. We could ask where they hang out. I shake my head. I doubt they want to hang out with stupid American teenagers. We're not stupid, and most of them didn't see them that much older than teenagers themselves. No, and besides, Miss Foley might check in on us. We should get back to the room. Melanie rolls her eyes. Why do you always have to do this? Do what? Say no to everything. It's like you're averse to adventure. I don't always say no. Nine times out of 10. We're about to start college. Let's live a little. I live just plenty, I snap. Besides, never bothered you before. Melanie and I have been best friends since her family moved two houses down from ours the summer before second grade. Since then, we've done everything together. We lost our teeth at the same time, we got our periods at the same time, even our boyfriends came in tandem. We spent so much time together, we almost have a secret language of inside jokes and looks. We fought plenty, of course. We're both only children, so sometimes we're like sisters. We once even broke a lamp in a tussle, but it's never been like this. I'm not even sure what this is, only that since we got on tour, being with Melanie makes me feel like I'm losing a race I didn't even know I'd entered. I came out here tonight, I say, my voice brittle and defensive. I lied to Miss Foley so we could come. Right? And we've had so much fun, so why don't we keep it going? I shake my head. She shuffles through her bag and pulls out her phone, scrolls through her texts. Hamlet just let out too. Craig says that Todd's taken the gang to a pub called the Dirty Duck. I like the sound of that. Come out with us, it'll be a blast. The thing is, I did go out with Melanie and everyone from the tour once about a week into the trip. By this time, they'd already gone out a couple times. And even though Melanie had known these guys only a week, the same amount of time I'd known them, she had all these inside jokes with them, jokes I didn't understand. I'd sat there around the crowded table, nursing a drink, feeling like the unlucky kid who had to start a new school midway into the year. I look at my watch, which has slid all the way down my wrist. I slide it back up so it covers the ugly red birthmark on my pulse. It's almost seven, and we have to be up early tomorrow for our train, so if you don't mind, I'm going to take my adventure of herself back to the room. With the huffiness in my voice, I sound just like my mom. Fine, I'll walk you back and then go to the pub. And what if Miss Foley checks in on us? Melanie laughs. Tell her I had heat stroke, and it's not hot anymore. She starts to walk up the slope back toward the bridge. What? Are you waiting for something? I look back down the water. The barge is now emptying from the evening rush. Trash collectors are out in force. The day is ending. It's not coming back. No, I say, I'm not. When I was 16, I was an exchange student uh, for my junior year of high school. And after that, it really kind of ignited wanderlust in me. So instead of going to college, I spent about three years traveling before I finally did decide to go to college. And I like to think that that year in England really kind of shifted my life from the person I was on my way to becoming to the person I did become and then also I have all these like fun travel stories from when I was 18 so some of those made it into just one day some of the later travel stories made it into the companion book Willem's book just one year which comes out in the fall and you know also really the kind of idea about the transformative power of travel the really the downside of travel too being part of what makes it change you all of that is in the book